Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka A Drive, and you episode 5 of the Pokemon Alpha Sapphire Mono Bug Egglock playthrough. We are already on episode 5, and if you missed the last episode, it's on the annotation in the screen in the description below. So make sure you guys are never missing an episode because you don't want to do that. Just to recap briefly, we did take down spoilers, we did take down Roxanne in the last episode, despite the challenge of facing rock types with our bug type onslaught here. But we were able to come up with a W, which was pretty nice, and we had zero cash casualties which is even nicer so I'm very very excited about that you can look at our team below we're rocking some pretty powerful Pokemon including a Scyther a Heracross we got our shiny dust stocks which is amazing totally random encounter Wurmple which is super epic and uh, as always guys if you are enjoying this series please leave a thumbs up rating for me that'd be great uh, just showing the support is always appreciated for any youtuber uh, and obviously I want you guys to support me because you know it's me but <laughs> anyway um, oh you there you're that fantastic trainer who helped me in Petalburg Woods! Help me! I was robbed by Team Aqua! I have to get the Devon parts back. Alright, so we gotta save this dude, get his Devon parts back because he's clueless. So we're gonna run through Route 116 here and head back to the Whismer Cave, which we already got our encounter in, so we're not gonna catch another Whismer, but uh, no big deal there. And uh, guys, we do have our question of the day, and that's going to kind of segue into our topic for this episode. Uh, you know, what is your favorite non-Pokemon game? So, uh, this is a really interesting question, right? Because we all play Pokemon, or we all at least have some interest in Pokemon, otherwise you wouldn't probably be watching this episode. Um, but what games do you guys play aside from Pokemon? I guess that's what I'm getting at. You know, what games do you guys like that are not called Pokemon? So for me, I'm gonna kinda go through my whole, my whole walkthrough of all the games that I really was into at one point or another. And hopefully it's fun to listen to. So anyway, uh, you guys seem to like the band commentary, so we're gonna go with a similar style today and kind of just tell you guys a little bit about my history with gaming and all that other stuff, which isn't all that exciting in all honesty. So anyway, I used to play games when I was a kid. Obviously, I played on like PlayStation. I had like a Super Nintendo, and all that stuff. I played like Mario Brothers and all this other random stuff, right? So really cool games. I always had a blast doing those games, and uh, that kind of segued into me getting more serious into games uh, come like high school and stuff. So basically, what happened was I remember seeing my brothers and they were playing po uh, World at War, Call of Duty World at War. As I missed the Megahorn, uh, they were playing Call of Duty World at War, and I was like, wow, that's a really sick game. Um, I want to try playing that. That looks like it'd be a lot of fun. Let's see if this kills. Oh my god, Hendrix, you legend. Uh, so I really wanted to to try a game that uh, like Call of Duty, and I got really, really hooked on Call of Duty, man. It was like hooked on phonics, but with a shooting game, basically, is what happened. Uh, but before we get to Call of Duty and all the nonsense that came along with that, we're going to talk about a game, and it's a very special game, and it is actually my favorite non-Pokemon game, as the question asked. It actually is Kingdom Hearts. So I was never a huge Final Fantasy guy. I never really played the Final Fantasy games, but Kingdom Hearts came out, and for some reason it caught my eye, um, and I started playing it, and I, and I just fell in love with the game. I just I just absolutely fell in love with the games. We get our Devin parts back. Uh, everything from the characters to obviously the fun with, with you know Donald and Goofy, and, and I had like the hugest child crush on, on Kyrie. As we see Mr. Briny here, Pico, am I glad to see your save? My Pico owes your life and freedom to you, lad! They call me Mr. Briny! And you are? Ah! So it's Bugcatcher! Is it now? Then I sincerely thank you, Bugcatcher! If there's ever a thing I can do to help you in turn, don't you hesitate to tell me! If I'm found, if I'm to be found, it will be always by my cottage by the sea, near Petalbear Woods! Come on, Pico! High time we're on our way to home! Bequee! All right, Mr. Brian, it was a pleasure to meet you, my friend. So, Kingdom Hearts, like I said, guys, I just, I just absolutely fell in love with that game, with the characters, with Kyrie, uh, the young, young A Drive at like 12 years old thought Kyrie was just, just the perfect video game character, uh, not in a weird way, but um, let's teach something cut. Oh no, I don't want to teach Heracross cut. That'd be stupid. Let's teach. We're gonna teach uh, Invincibug cut. I can always delete it later, but I want to take on some of these trainers real quick because our team isn't really. 
the level where I want to be. And cut is better than scratch anyway, so uh, it's move pool is pretty restricted. So anyway, um, so Kingdom Hearts, guys, like that game, and, and what really killed that series for me is the fact that, yeah, they released some non-main games, they released like Chan Memories and things like that on like the 3DS or whatever and stuff like that, and Dream Drop Distance, whatever, but they never came out with Kingdom Hearts 3, and I know there's supposed to be Kingdom Hearts 3, it's supposed to be a multi-platform game, it's not gonna just be PlayStation 4, I did see the information on that, I don't know what's going on, but if you remember at the end of Kingdom Hearts 2, spoilers, the game's been out for 10 years, uh, there's this scene where you get to the king the key graveyard and like they should have been pumping out another game right away Dude, that was like my favorite game. But anyway, I'm happy where I'm at in my life So maybe it doesn't matter, but oh I should not be staying in on it on this thing because this thing could hit me really hard Oh my god that damage though. He tried to teleport against me. You can't teleport against Hendrix, bro Get out of here vaults um Kingdom Hearts was my game, but then anyway, I kind of kind of always played games on and off, but nothing too crazy. But then I got into Call of Duty. My brothers were playing World of War one day, and I saw them play, and I was like, oh my god, guys, I really got to try playing this Call of Duty game. I really got to try it. It looks like a ton of fun, and I just fell in love with Call of Duty, man. I got so into it. I used to watch guys like Tabes and Hutch and c Nanners and all these guys on YouTube. I used to watch Machinima Respawn all the time, and that was what I got really into, guys. There was so many... Like so many awesome content providers at the time doing that on YouTube and blame truth is another one uh, Blame truth is actually I think me and blame truth are gonna do a little collab coming up pretty soon Which is for me like amazing because he was one of my favorite guys to watch uh, you know as in high school and stuff um, But I saw these guys doing content on tapes and like I was like yo I want to do videos like this I want to do videos like this so a lot of people ask me when I started doing YouTube and stuff and the true answer is actually I started doing YouTube back in 2010 Oh my god, I went out, uh, we're actually gonna fall asleep here. I went out to, uh, uh, I actually ordered a Hapog HD PVR online, um, and I recorded my first ever montage in a day. It was the worst montage ever. You can actually, I think you might be able to find it. It's unlisted, so it'd be kind of hard to find it, but you might be able to find it still. But I recorded my first ever montage in one day. It was called Autum or it was called Autumn after autumnal drive, which is what a drive does indeed stand for, to anyone out there who's wondering. Um, and then I recorded a gameplay commentary, and it's like, yo, what's going on, guys? This is so weird to talk to myself, whatever. I recorded my first ever Call of Duty commentary, and um, actually, what's really cool is one of my buddies, uh, his name is John, he actually works for Twitch. Uh, I'm still in touch with John. John is still, I'm still in touch with John, and he's, uh, he helped me out super big back when I started Call of Duty, and and uh, that was really cool. So I was really into Call of Duty, really into Call of Duty. I started posting videos online. I had a blast doing it. And uh, I really wanted to be like the super famous YouTube Call of Duty guy. But it didn't really work out, right? It didn't really work out. I did it on and off for a few years. I was on a couple cool sniping teams like the Darth Empire and the Third, Third Eye Snipers. And then I joined Team Caliber after coming back from, from quitting Call of Duty for a year or whatever. Um, but I basically just played Call of Duty nonstop for like a couple years. And basically from, from COD 4, I didn't really, I didn't record it, but COD 4, World of War, and then I got really into Modern Warfare 2, and that's when I started recording gameplay commentaries online. Um, but at some point in that process, and I believe it was around the time I took a hiatus uh, from Call of Duty, so like two or three years in, I mean, I was obviously pretty busy with the, the music stuff, so that was definitely took a big, big part of it, but in between the music stuff that I mentioned in the last video, and all that other stuff, uh, I really, really, really got into, um, I really got into Skyrim. As we have this guy here. Oh, how did it go? Did you get my Devon pots? You did! You got them back! You really are a great trainer! I know it was my thing, so I'll give you a great ball. Really, dude? That's how you're gonna give me a great ball? <sighs> oh, yes, young man, please come with me. Alright, so we're gonna follow him into the Devon Corporation, which is, of course, where Mr. Stone is. We're gonna meet Mr. Stone, which is kinda cool. So, anyway, Skyrim was my jam, dude. I had Skyrim on PlayStation 4, uh, and I played it until I think Dawn Guard came out. Or one of the DLCs, and I had a blast doing it. But I heard that on Xbox 360 it played better, and most games are like that. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get Skyrim for Xbox too. So I went and got it for Xbox 360. I started playing Skyrim on Xbox, and I loved it so much. And I'll recap here at the end. I'm Mr. Stone, the president of Devon Corporation. I just heard. Oh, uh, I heard just now that we have quite a bit to thank you for. So you helped out my staff not just once, but twice. There's a favor I'd like to ask of a reliable trainer like you. Oh, hail the Helix Fossil. Now I want you to know I'm a president you can trust. I'd never be so mean to ask for a favor for nothing in return. So here, give me your Pokenav Plus for a moment. He updated my Pokenav Plus so you can use the Buzznav function. The function I just added to your Pokenav Plus is called the Buzznav. 
It's an indispensable tool for any trainer who's traveling out in the world. Use it and you'll be able to get the latest news from around the region and from your own friends anytime, any place. Now let me get to the important issue of what it is I need you to do. I want you to deliver this letter to a man named Steven. You should find him in Duford. But I can't you obtain the letter? Hey! <laughs> You'll have to cross the sea to reach Duford, of course. I'll ask Mr. Bryan, the old sailor who lives in the hut on Route 104, to help with the crossing. Go find him and he should agree. I'm counting on you. Don't mess this up, kid. Alright, so, back to the story here, back to story time with A-Drive. I got Skyrim on Xbox 360, I loved it, it was a blast, it was a little bit better than the PS4 version, didn't have as much lag, less loading time between screens, etc. And then I was like, I heard about mods, I heard about what it's like to play on a PC, I heard about Steam, all this stuff, and I was like, yo, I need to get on this, I need to get on this. Oh, hey, bug catcher, have you been catching lots of Pokemon? I'm doing good on that front, at least. I caught so many Pokemon in Petalburg Woods that I just ran out of balls. Oh, yeah, and I passed by Mr. Brownie when I was in Petalburg Woods. Hmm, I guess he must have been on his way to this cottage over at 104! Bugcatcher, you just moved here, so there's no way you could know, but Mr. Brownie was once a highly respected seafarer. Thanks, May. Alright, so May's giving us the breakdown. We gotta go talk to Mr. Brownie. So, Steam, dude, Steam. Alright, so I'm not a big uh, gamer just in general, but I found Steam and I found Skyrim, and I played a lot of time on Skyrim on Steam. I get to the point, guys, where I would get home from my college classes, and I would legit just play until like 3 in the morning. I would just put headphones on, I would turn the lights off in my room, and I would just be staring at my 27-inch screen, playing some Skyrim, man. That was the life. That was probably some of the best, best times of my life. As, as lame or as boring as that might sound, I had so much fun playing that game. It gave me that, like, that satisfaction that I got from playing, like, Kingdom Hearts. It gave me that in, in, a, in a world that was fully open. I could do whatever the heck I wanted. I could be whatever character I wanted. I could change my character if I wanted to. I just absolutely loved that game and I never like fully beat it. I beat the main story, but it I didn't even play the main story of the game until after like 500 hours of playing that game. Um, I loved going straight up Twilight in that game and just playing as a vampire. There's all sorts of mods you can add to the game that make it even more fun, that make it like so you can't go out during the daytime and people chase you if you're in the daytime or whatever, like all sorts of cool stuff that they made uh, to kind of go along with with being a vampire or being a werewolf. I would like to pick those like kind of pseudo classes or whatever. Um, and, and those were so fun, guys. It was so fun. As we actually pick up the Miracle Seed. Thank you, girl. We're going to give that to the homie True Warrior here. That's pretty good, actually. We can give that to him. Uh, so we're gonna give him the Miracle Seed, which is gonna boost his Razor Leaf, of course, so not bad. Um, I just, Skyrim guys just did it for me. Like, that game was mind-blowing. It got to the point where I, I can't play it anymore because it kind of like, some people, you know, kind of get addicted to games like World of Warcraft and stuff. Well, I'm the kind of person who kind of got addicted to Skyrim. Not in a terrible way. Like, I don't think it, like, hindered my life in any way, but it was definitely a game where I don't think I'll ever go back to playing it just because I knew how much time it took up and I don't have the time to do that now so if I stumbled across I don't think I could just play it for five minutes I'd want to play it uh, exponentially again kind of like how I used to and I'm sure there's games like that that you guys are into uh, Pokemon has kind of been like that in a little in a, in, a, in a positive way though for me obviously I do this as my my job now but um, I like playing Pokemon quite a bit and I can play this game over and over again it doesn't bother me at all so um, anyway so Skyrim, dude, Skyrim. Anyway, jumping after Skyrim, I got back into Call of Duty around Call of Duty Ghosts, and I got into competitive Call of Duty, and I started grinding my tail off to become this super famous competitive Call of Duty player, which, as you could probably tell, didn't work out. But that's kind of what led to where I'm at right now. So I was doing competitive Call of Duty. I was in a team called the Saints of TK. It was an amateur team based off of members in Team Caliber. So it was me, Roster, Jabba, and Explicit TK, and we were good. We were good, guys. Uh, if you don't know, there's two websites that really host Call of Duty. It's UMG and MLG. And uh, UMG had just launched their website, and we had a team. And I joined the team midway through, so these guys deserve way more credit than I do. But I did join the team midway through, and they put in the work. These kids I played with. We had a four-man team, and out of the entire website of UMG for the 4K BenQ Cup, which is 4v4 setting, uh, we were ranked at one point in the top 10 of teams. Hold on, lass, believe that, Pico! Oh, if it ain't Bug Catcher, you're the one who saved my Pico! Aye, but we owe you for that day. What's that? You wanna sail with me? What's this all about then? A letter bound for Duford. Certainly, that'll be no problem at all. You've come to the right man. Shall we hoist sail for Duford at once? Let's go to Duford. Anchors away! All right, so. <laughs> 
Uh, you guys have to forgive my voiceovers. I think they're horrible, but I hope they're at least somewhat funny. This is one of my favorite scenes in the game, by the way. Anyway. So I was on this team. We were, like, ranked top 10 on this website. We made the playoffs for the Ben Q Cup. And uh, we actually did not win. We lost in the first round. But around that time, I started streaming again on Twitch. I had streamed, like, maybe once or twice prior, like, a few years back. My account was made in, I think, 2010 on Twitch or 2011. So I have a pretty OG Twitch account. Or relatively. It was from Justin.tv, anyway. Um... So, we, you know, you kind of go back in time for that. But we're going to get the fishing rod real quick because we can get some more eggs here. We can get some more eggs. Because um, I can actually get my encounter on this route if we really want to get fancy. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's get an encounter. We'll hatch an egg and we'll see what we're going to come out with before we get too far here. Um, I think I actually have to take on the gym leader before I go anywhere anyway. So maybe we'll do the gym leader. But let's catch a Pokemon first because I kind of want to kind of want to test our luck here. Um, so... Call of Duty, but then I was like streaming it and stuff like that, and I just wasn't really feeling it anymore. Uh, so one day I decided I was gonna just try to stream some, um, try to stream. Let me try to reel this in really quick. Try to stream the Pokemon X Nuzlocke, and that's actually what I did do. I streamed the Pokemon X Nuzlocke on my on my Twitch channel with my video camera, like a face camera, pointing at my 3DS. Um, and hoping that people would watch me and I had like two viewers, but I streamed this Nuzlocke and I had a blast doing it It was so much fun to play through this Nuzlocke on stream and have an audience even though it was a very small audience um, But that kind of led me into getting my capture card and all that stuff So like this long road of random games that I played and all this other stuff like really kind of got me to where I'm at now and, and, and it's really cool in my opinion that I was able to get to this point from where I was at, especially considering the fact that, you know, I, I wasn't really, I never made Pokemon content. I always wanted to. If you dig really far back on this channel, you could find some Pokemon Showdown stuff from like 2011 that I did, but it was like just Showdown. It was like what, like really bad quality. But you could tell I, I always wanted to do Pokemon on this channel. That was one of the things. I, I mean, I, there's nothing else to say. I always wanted to do Pokemon on this channel, and I just never got to it. I just never got to do it. Uh, and then I got my capture card last summer, and I just started grinding my tail off on Twitch. I saw it as an opportunity. I felt that YouTube was a little challenging to kind of grow on YouTube. So I figured, all right, I'm going to try to grind my tail off on Twitch and see if that can, you know, amount to something positive in my life. And what do you know? It's my full-time job now. So, hey, what are you going to do? That's pretty cool, right? Um, so let me just pull up my random number generator. Um, that's not the right one. Random number generator. Maybe this one. Uh, as we cat our Magikarp, so we're going to swap the Magikarp out. I found my random number generator. We're going to set that to 40. And we're going to get our number here in just a moment. So we're going to swap out the Magikarp for one of the eggs. We're going to hash the egg and see what we're working with. Again, I'm not going to be swapping anything out of my party until we actually um, we actually have something faint. Um, because I, I just want to like, use the Pokemon, you know, as we have them. But uh, let's see what we got here. We might actually just take on Brawly right now. All right, so we got this egg. We got this Magikarp that we're going to swap out for an egg here in a second. Let's see where he... All right, so here's the Magikarp, and here's our egg. So let's do the random number generator. It is going to be number 12, which is Mystic Slash, actually. So Laxus Mystic Slash has given us the egg number 12, which is actually named Buzzkill. So we're going to we're gonna try to grab this thing. Oh, there we go. So Buzzkill, number 12. So we're going to swap that for number 12. So I believe that's this one right here. So whatever that is. So let's hatch that egg. We're going to hatch this egg right here. We're gonna, we'll swap it with Dust Ox for now. And we'll see what we're going to work with. Uh, obviously, it's going to go right into my PC regardless. But let's hatch the egg. I'm going to do a quick cut right here while I go hatch this egg. I'll be right back. All right, guys. We are back. That took forever to hatch. Come on, Mystic Slash. You dropped the ball on that one. So this one's nickname is supposed to be Buzzkill. So if I had to guess, it's going to be either a male combi to troll me <laughs> or it's going to be a Weedle. <laughs> That's a Yanmo! Oh, let's go! Dude, not bad. So this is going to be nicknamed Buzzkill after Mystic Slash. Ah, oh, dude, I was not expecting that. I thought it was going to be a male combi to troll me. I thought that's what you are going to do. So we're going to name this thing Buzzkill. Uh, we're going to take a look at it, too, because I love Yanmo. It's definitely one of my favorite uh, bug-type Pokemon. I've always said that if I had a bug-type gym, I would have Yanma on my team. Uh, there's no doubt about it. So let's go take a look at Yanma really quick. And then uh, it's going to end up back in the PC because I'm going to keep the six that we have. And then let's go take on Brawly's gym. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But let's take a look at this Yanma first. Buzzkill. It's a male Yanma. And it's got Tackle and Foresight. Uh, it is actually Modest Nature, which is really good. And it uh, looks like it's Speed Boost. So not bad. Not bad. I don't know if... I think Compound Eyes would probably be better for an in-game playthrough. But I'm not going to not gonna be that guy. So... Let's swap, uh, let's swap this thing out. We're gonna switch this guy in. Obviously, we're gonna grab our lovely, uh, our lovely shiny Amethyst back, because, you know, that's how we roll. 
And that's our team, so we're gonna go take on, on the gym leader Brawly right now. I didn't think we'd go back to back episodes with gym leaders, but we'll see how long this episode takes and all that good stuff, and I think I already healed up actually, so we could just go right into the gym. I think we can take down this, these gym leaders in the gym, the gym leader in the time. I think we can. Let's give it a go. Uh, who do I want to train up in this in this gym though? That is the real question. I mean, I could honestly just go with redemption and fly through it. We could rock with Hendrix and just yeah, let's rock with Hendrix first. First, and then I, I have uh, you know we have redemption. Who could probably just just body this entire gym? Uh, actually, Hendrix could probably body the entire gym too. I just remember that it had aerial ace. So we do have a meta type that we're gonna be facing first, but I don't think it should be too big of a deal. Let me make a note that that was a Yama, so I don't forget. But. Uh, so he's got a meta tie. He is a higher level than me, but we do have Aerial Ace, and we should be able to do some serious damage to this thing. Should be able to do some serious damage to this thing. So I talked about how I got to playing Pokemon, and a lot of people ask me what games I play now. And I've always said that I'm the kind of person, if you can't tell from my story, where I play a game and I just get locked into that game for a long time. Like, I don't really change the game I play too often. Uh, I'll, I'm cool with sticking with the same games over and over again. I'm cool with, like, you know, okay, I'm just gonna play, you know, Call of Duty for the next couple years. I'm cool, I'm, I'm just gonna play Pokemon for the next two years. Like, that's cool with me, that doesn't bother me in the slightest, you know what I mean? Like, I don't get bored of games very easily if I like the game. Um, so currently, if you ask me what games I'm currently playing, the only game I'm currently playing is Pokemon. Uh, I don't, like, actively play any new games. I'm not really the kind of person who a new game comes out and I rush to the store to go get it. Um, I was excited about Destiny, I played the beta, but I didn't actually end up playing the full version of the game. Uh, maybe one day I'll pick it up, but it gets to the point where the game's been out for so long that I don't even bother going to pick it up because I can just get something newer. But, that's one thing I don't do is I don't spend a ton of money on games because I'm always just playing the same games over and over again. But, um, that's just me. I don't know if anyone else is like that. I know a lot of people like to jump with the craze of the new games coming out. I don't blame you, like, it's a new adventure, it's something new. If, like, a new Pokemon game comes out, heck yeah, I'm gonna go grab that. But uh, otherwise, I'm pretty cool with just playing, you know, Pokemon right now or whatever the game is. So, but we'll see. I do want to do a let's play of a different game, a non-Pokemon game at some point on this channel. Keep in mind, this channel is always going to be Pokemon based. But I could see myself doing a, a non-Pokemon let's play. That'd be really fun. I just don't know what yet. I just don't know what. I thought about doing Kingdom Hearts. I don't know if people would want to watch that because it is. That's a really old game. Um, I actually do have a plan for a let's play that I want to start. Maybe I'll start that soon. Uh, sooner than I thought. Uh, that's our let's play. I think I would try to bulk record though and then upload afterwards because it's it, it's gonna take a lot of time I actually have an idea. I just just remember the idea So maybe we'll get to that. But anyway, we're gonna take on this meta site here in the gym our second gym leader I can't even believe that we're gonna there's like a very short distance between this gym and the previous one So we might just go back to back gyms here and, and, and get them out of the way and this should be one of the easier gyms Hopefully, I don't want to get too ahead of myself here, but this shouldn't be too difficult of a gym just because uh, fighting type a uh, bug type does resist fighting type, so um, we should be in a pretty good spot. And and obviously, you know, redemption can handle anything. It's four times resistant, so that is one good thing. Bug flying is a terrible type. It really is. But that is one good thing about bug flying type is the fact that it does get a four times resistance to fighting. Now, most fighting Pokemon actually get rock moves as well, which is four times super effective to bug type. So then it's a moot point. But it is good to know, right? So Vinny wants to learn poison powder, which is really interesting. Uh, I'm actually going to give him Poison Powder over Stun Spore because I think he might get Venishock later or we could buy the TM for Venishock or something. And I feel like Venishocking with Poison Powder is going to be like a sick combination later on. I know Dustox is probably going to do the same thing, but I kind of don't like the fact that they both do the same thing. I mean, Dustox and Venomoth are, are very similar Pokemon, but that's okay. So I need to go to the left here, it looks like, if I'm not mistaken. And that actually, we're already at the at the gym leader. That was easy enough. So we're gonna take on Brawly here. We're gonna take on Brawly. Who do I want to lead with? Do I just lead with Hendrix and just say, "Yo, Hendrix, this is your gym. Just take it, take it down." Or do I do I give Vinny some action? Do we get Amos? Yeah, I think Vinny is the way to rock here. I mean Hendrix. Let's just get Hendrix because he is only a level 11. So let's take on Brawly. Let's do this. What do you got for me, man? Uh oh. I'm Brawly. Doofus gym leader. I've been churned in the rough waves of these parts, and I've grown tough using the cave at the outskirts of this town as my training ground, as well as the equipment in this gym. So you want to challenge me, eh? Let me see what you're made of. Boom, boom. Mm. Let's go. Better take on Brawly, the fighting type gym leader. We should be okay. I'm not nearly as scared about Brawly as I was about Roxanne, but I don't want to. I don't want to take any any uh, any risks here, so we're gonna play it safe as always. We're gonna lead with Hendrix against his Machop here, uh, his little Machop, who uh, was heavy lifting. 
Uh, I think his, his Makuhita is actually a really high level. He's level 14, so he does have the level advantage over me. You go for an aerial ace to see what he can do. I do outspeed, which is nice. And that's over, that's 2 K. So he's gonna go for Karate Chop. We should be able to take this no problem. That only does 8, 6 damage. Dude, that does nothing. He might use a po- No, he's just gonna go down. So, Machop goes down. We can't miss with Aerial Ace, which is a very beautiful thing. And that's gonna be this first Pokemon down. Hendrix gonna grow to level 12, which is nice. It's gonna- Look at how many- How many, like, base stats he gains. Like, he's just so good. I love Heracross. I really do. In comes Makuhita, level 16. So he's got a really big level jump on us. But we're gonna go for the Aerial Ace again. I don't believe there's anything he can hit us with. If he has Aerial Ace or something, I'm gonna be very scared. Wow, that did so much. He went for Bulk Up. So I think he's gonna go for the Potion here, but it should be a 2-hit KO still, even with the Bulk Up. I'm surprised that did so much. Oh, he's got Super Potion. Surprised that did so much. I don't think that was a crit, was it? This thing just is frail, I guess. Wow, look how much damage that does. I love it. Another air lace, and that's gonna be it. We're gonna pick up our second gym badge here. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, man. Not even a big deal. Brawly goes down to Hendrix, who just powers his way through this gym. Whoa, whoa, dude! You made a much bigger splash than I expected. Whoa, dude. Okay, you got me. Set his gym badge. The accent changed, but we got the badge, baby. Let's go. Second gym badge. Back to back episodes. Not bad. Uh, the knuckle badge makes all Pokemon up to level 30, even those you get in trades. Obey without question. Here's an item. Bulk up. Oh, yo. We're about to rock that bulk up Hendrix right now. I'm about to throw bulk up on Hendrix, and I also have rock team, so we're gonna, we're gonna teach that to something as well. Let's throw bulk. Let's let's check out our TM usage right now, because we got some good stuff. Surprisingly. Uh, only, he only learns. Oh, I thought I thought for some reason Scyther could learn bulk up, but let's teach bulk up to him because that could be really good. That'd be really. I like his moves. I really like his move set. But I think if we get rid of Horn Attack, because honestly, like Mega Horn, Rock Blast, they're all gonna do a lot. I feel like bulk up is good though. Do I need Horn Attack when I have Stab, Mega Horn, and Aerial Ace and Rock Blast? Let's get rid of Horn Attack for bulk up. I do want to get a fighting move on this thing. I wish I had like six move slots for him, but that's okay. And can anyone think learn Rock Tomb? Only, only he can learn Rock Tomb, so that's fine. We're not going to teach anything Rock Tomb, because he's already got Rock Blast, which I want for Mega Heracross, if we do go with Mega Heracross later on in the game. So, not a big deal. Not a huge deal. Let's, uh, we just beat the Gym Leader, so I don't even really have to feel, heal up. We could just swap a Pokemon around here. We can take on a few trainers and head to the cave before we go any further. Let's get some action for... Amethyst, we got some trainers coming up. I think Amethyst could do some work here. I know Invincibug is kind of just chilling, but don't stress about that. Don't stress about that. It's picking up experience share. Uh, so this guy's actually gonna give me a silk scarf, which is nice. And we could we could teach that to I don't know who we could teach that to or give that to. For now, I think we're just gonna hold on to it, but it's good to have. It's good to have. So we got a couple trains here. It's actually a new route too. So maybe we'll try to grab an encounter here later or something. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll cast the rod, try to catch something. Fisherman Ned, he's got a tentacle, so it looks like our shiny Amethyst should be in decent shape here against a tentacle. Look how beautiful this thing is, guys. Woo! If you haven't hit that thumbs up button for me yet, do it for the Amethyst. Every episode, that's what we're gonna give the thumbs up to. Is the fact that we have a shiny on this playthrough, guys, which is amazing. I did a good amount. It's 3 KO. Amethyst is just beautiful. It just is. I mean, I'm just, I just still... I'm never gonna get over the fact that we found this purple wormhole, guys. I'm never gonna get over it. I'm never gonna get over it. I shouldn't have to. It's awesome. It's awesome. I hope you falling is not a sign of things to come. You're not allowed to fall or fail. You're you're only here to win for me, buddy. Tentacle's gonna go down. No big deal. I'm just gonna mow through some of these trainers. I'm the kind of person who, who likes to face the trainers. I know in like co-ops and stuff like that, you typically try to skip trainers and stuff to speed things along. It doesn't really bother me too much. I like playing the trainers. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's good to level up. It's good to get that experience. Uh, so this guy was born in a village by the sea, and then he came to Hoenn. So we'll see if that means he's got any good Pokemon. He's got a Slack Off, which isn't too big of a deal. I think we can handle Slack Off, no problem here. I love, I always love Slack Off's animation, how it gets sent out, it tries to hold itself up, and then just kind of gently falls to the ground. I always thought that was so cute. All right, let's go with, uh, I guess we'll go for Confusion? Poison Sting, maybe get a poison on it. Boom! Get the poison. So you can go for a yawn, which I'm gonna switch out then, because I'm not trying to mess with this thing. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to deal with yawning and all that other nonsense. Let's go to Vinny. Let's get some Vinny action here. Vinny! Vinny, the female Vinny! Vinny the Venonat. He's got Truant. 
And I can just go with Psybeam or Sleep Powder, but we're gonna go with Psybeam. Oh god, that did nothing. Do you ever slack off? Oh god. Alright, I'm about to just go to Redemption then. And just just vacuum wave. Let's just go to vacuum vacuum wave this thing twice and call it a day. This guy's just gonna stall me out here. He's gonna stall me out. I see what your strategy is. Catch this vacuum wave, bro. Boom! That's not bad. Alright, I'm just gonna vacuum wave again. I don't think we'll fall asleep if we knock it out, so. Not an issue here, not an issue. And my bad if you guys hear noise in the background again. As yesterday, they're still working on this patio and all sorts of non stuff. Uh, sidewalk, whatever. I don't know, they're just doing all this stuff outside. And the screen are level 14, not bad. And. That was it, that was it for him. Woo! Alright, well, I think we need to loop around this corner here. I don't know if there, there might be one more trainer. There's all these routes over here. Oh, there's one more trainer and a Pokeball. We got a protein. Let's take on this trainer. Let's take on this trainer here. Let's let's roll with, I guess we'll just roll with Amethyst again. And after this trainer, I think we'll probably wrap up this episode. Uh, but guys, don't forget the question of the day above my head. What is your favorite non-Pokemon game? We talked about some of the games that I like to play and kind of how I got to this point. If there's any questions you guys have for me, feel free to throw them in the comment section below. Uh, I could use that in a, as a topic for a future episode, of course. Um, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for me if you have not done so yet. If not for me, for the purple amethyst, for the shiny dust socks, I do like the fact that it, its body is actually still purple. So I think it, it fits out really well that it did evolve into dust socks instead of Beautifly. Um, just because it stays purple. It's a different color purple, but it's pretty cool, right? So, uh, definitely, definitely do that for me. And Vincebug's gonna go to level 11, not bad. Redemption goes to level 15. And our bug Pokemon, despite the concern I'm sure a lot of you guys had over our bugs, are doing pretty good. Um, our next gym leader is Watson, who's got Electric type and Steel type because of Magneton. So he could be a challenge. He could be a challenge. I don't have anything that really might be in a good spot, but Invincibug, if it doesn't evolve by then, will still be a ground type, so there's at least that going for us. So you might have to take advantage of that. We'll have to see, we'll see how things go. We'll see how things go. But in, in our PC, we have another another Ninkata, we have a Yanma. So we got a couple cool Pokemon on the PC, if those ever get used. And... Amos is gonna go to level, uh, no, Vinny's gonna go to level 14. And Elliot's gonna go down. So what I'm gonna do here to close out the episode, just because I really enjoy, enjoy doing the egg hatching, we're gonna catch another Pokemon on this route, because this is a new route. I don't believe I caught anything here yet. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is route, whatever it's called, route one something or other. I don't believe we, we did anything on this route. Let me just double check, let me check the map. Where's my map? How do you even check the map in this game? Like this? Let's look at our map, this is route 106. Oh yeah, there's no way that we caught a Pokemon on Route 106. We caught the Pokemon in Dewford before. So this will be our Route 106 Pokemon. So let's try to catch something really quick. And then we're gonna hatch an egg to end the episode. Um, and that'll be our second egg hatch of the day. Let's see if I can reel something in here. There we go. So this will be our first encounter for Route 106. And then next episode, we're gonna head into the cave. We're gonna try to meet up against with Steven Stone. So we got a tentacle here. That might be a little bit tougher to catch than that Magikarp, but... I think we can do it. I think we can do it. He's only level five. Oh, I can't even attack this thing, can I? I can poison sting it. Let's see how much that does. I don't want to kill it. That does nothing. I might just throw pokeballs at it. He's gonna poison sting me too. That's kind of annoying. All right, let's see if we can catch this thing. Let's go with the pokeball, and I'm gonna swap it out hopefully for another bug type Pokemon in my PC. So far, you guys have been great. Uh, you guys have been sending me really cool eggs that I've gotten so far that we've hatched. They've all been bug types, which I would say is is probably the best part. Um, so let's get that random number generator rocking right now. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna randomize it as we're sending this to the PC, and it's actually number 24, which looks like it's by Mighty Putty, and the Pokemon is called Home Wrecker. So number 24, Mighty Putty, aka Putty, sent us that, and its nickname is gonna be Home Wrecker. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that. So Home Wrecker leads me to believe, like when I think of Home Wreckers, I think of like termites. And ants so I'm gonna just make a wild guess and say it's gonna be a Durant feel free to pause if you want to try to guess yourself in the comment section or just guess yourself in general but this is gonna be number 24 so I, I got a maths really quick or 6 12 18 24 right is that right 21 22 23 24 so that's gonna be our egg we're gonna hatch this guy right here this is gonna be the one this is home wrecker right here guys so we'll see what home wrecker ends up being I'm gonna do a quick video cut as usual and go hatch this egg. I will be right back.
All right, guys, we are back. We're going to hatch this egg right now. As I said, its nickname is Homewrecker, so my guess is going to be a Durant. But we'll see what it's going to be. It's coming from, like I said, Putty, and the nickname is Homewrecker. And it is going to be another Heracross, but a female Heracross this time. Nickname Homewrecker. Not bad. So we got our second Heracross, so a couple duplicates so far, but that's okay. So this one's going to be Homewrecker. It's funny that it's a female. I don't know if that really, really fits, but... We're gonna name it Female Homewrecker. I guess this Heracross was cheating on Hendrix or something. I don't know. But this thing's a Homewrecker. This thing is a Homewrecker. <laughs> uh, let's take a look at its stats really quick before we wrap up the episode, and then we'll call it a day. And then I'll see you guys on this daily series, of course, guys, every single day. I hope you guys are enjoying the fact that it is a daily series, including the weekends. I'll be uploading this on the weekend as well. So have no fear. Your homie A Drive is here. So let's take a look at this thing. Let's swap it for our amethyst again, as always, and we'll see what we're working with. Where did I? It's right here. So, home wrecker is serious nature guts with endure, mega horn, leer, and horn attack. So not bad at all. Pretty cool. Welcome to the squad, home wrecker, and that's gonna be it for me, guys. My name is Dan. I also go by A Drive. If you have not hit the thumbs up button yet, definitely do so, and I will catch you guys in the next episode of the Alpha Sapphire Mono Bug Egglock. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.